Hello YouTubes, I just got a delivery of a static grass starter kit. The only trouble is, I don't have a static grass applicator and they cost anywhere from 70 to 80 to over $150. So today I'm going to make one for less than $10 using a bug zapper, a mesh strainer or sieve, some old speaker wire and a crocodile clip and my wife's favourite chopping board. Don't worry, I got a new one. In case you don't know what static grass is, it's a method of creating realistic looking grass on your layout using static electricity. A bit like when you rub a balloon on your hair and then your hair stands up. Hey, maybe you should just use a balloon. No, let's stick with the plan. Right, let me show you how this is going to come together. This is a bug zapper available at most hardware stores and usually find them in dollar stores. I got this in Dollarama and it cost $4, which is actually pretty good. It takes a couple of AA batteries, which were not included. You need to find your own and use decent batteries. I'm using Duracell. Uh, I should take them out before I start messing with this, so I'll do that in a minute. Now, I'm not using the red section. I'm only using the black section with all the electronics inside. The way this works briefly is you have two mesh on the outsides, one there, one there, and there's a thinner mesh on the inside. Fly comes along, goes through the big mesh, touches the small mesh, creates a circuit, electrocutes itself. Pretty gruesome, but ha ha. Next, we'll be using a sieve or strainer. Now, I actually bought a few of these because the first couple I got I felt the mesh was a bit too fine and I wouldn't be able to sprinkle down longer grass. So I've gone for a kind of medium mesh. When I take this apart, you'll see three wires. One wire goes to this side, one wire goes to that side, and the other wire goes to the center mesh. We're only going to be using two of the wires. And one of the wires is going to be going to this mesh. The other wire will be getting grounded near the subject of your sprinkling. So there will be an extra wire that we'll be getting rid of. This will be the wire I'm going to use to run from the mechanism to ground the subject. And I will be attaching it with a crocodile clip. And we've decided on using this one because it's a lot easier to find where to squash it. If you use the wee skinny ones, you could be like flopping about and they're just not very, I, I just don't like them. Also, you notice this is insulated. That'll be important later. Right, let's start dismantling this, see what's inside. Lots of companies make these, but they all follow the same basic principle. I've seen some that I've got three screws up here. I've got one screw there, one there, one there, one there. Let's take the batteries out while I remember. Ooh, fancy batteries with a little tester. Nice. Very cool. So we're good for batteries. Right, let's take this apart. Actually, I'm going to press the button a few times just to make sure there's no charge still in the mesh. Because as much as this just kills flies, it will give you a pretty nasty shock. Do this at your own risk, people. Should probably start with that, right? to see what lies beneath. Oh, not much. There is a little on off switch. It's a momentary switch, so you have to press it and keep it pressed for it to work. Do not lose that. And these are the three wires I was talking about. So I'm going to take a wild guess and presume that the two yellow go to the outside of this mesh, one side there, one side there, and the red wire goes to the inner mesh. So it's the red wire we are going to use to go to the strainer. So we need to somehow take this off and attach it to the strainer. It looks like this just pops out of these holes or channels somehow, like so. We can snip these wires and this is why we've got more wire because we're going to extend the red wire to go to that and extend one of the yellow wires to use as our grounding prong, if you like. So let me snip 
and rejoin, I guess. There's several ways you could do this. If you're a competent solderer, you could remove these wires here from the circuit board and resolder the wires to go directly from there to there and your ground ones are the wrong way around. Uh, I'm not a competent solderer, so I am going to snip these wires and solder them there. The other option would be to snip your wires and add some wire connectors and feed them where they need to go. Right, let us proceed. There's no point saving all this wire because I'm going to be snipping it quite far back here anyway. So I will be using the red one, so let's snip that there. And I'll be using one of the yellow ones. Let's snip that there. And the other one we're just going to get rid of, so I'm going to snip it right down at where it's soldered on. Nice and tidy. I'm going to strip these back because I will be creating a solder joint to my new wire. Give them a twist and I will be tinning these before I solder them together. Actually, the method that I was taught years ago to solder was you don't twist them at this point. You push the next wire into it, then twist them together and then solder it. Okay, let us proceed with this thing. How are we going to get this to attach in there? Well, first of all, I'm going to snip these bits off. Using my rail cutters, which are way over the top for rail cutters, but I said before, why make life hard for yourself? Don't need that bit. Okay, so let's see how this is going to line up. Not bad, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten these bars out just to make it as stable as possible because at the moment it might do that and I want it to be as rigid as possible and this is where the chopping board comes in. I'm going to cut some of this plastic to this shape, roughly this shape, probably all the way down to there and I'll be doing two slices of it so this will become a, a bit of a sandwich. Don't worry, it'll make sense when I cut it out. So let me do that.
Well, that's the overly complicated part done. You might find a, an easier way to secure this in place. You could just wrap it with insulating tape. I don't know, bubble gum. I just wanted it a bit more secure. I didn't want it falling out. I didn't want it wobbling. So that's why I've done it that way. I will be modifying this later on because I want a container to go on the top. I was going to use these little guys with the removable lids. Basically, I would cut this section out, glue that down there, and it would mean that these are interchangeable. I've got another two of them. So I can have different lengths of grass and then I can just swap them over whenever I like. But this one's a little bit small for this strainer. So I may find another container. Right, let's get on with some wiring. Right, need to get apart again. Which is fine because this is the wrong way around. If I'm going to be shaking this way, I want the button that way. So we're upside down anyway. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to drill a couple of holes. I thought about running one of the wires, the wire that goes to the mesh, I thought about running up here, but I've got enough grooves in there. So I'm just going to, going to drill a wee hole through there. One at that side, one at this side. So one will be going to the mesh and one will be, one will be going to my ground. Let me drill them. Hmm, I could actually run it quite far up there. I think that's what I'll do. Wait a minute, am I the right around this time? Nope, I was upside down, so it's the other side I need. Let me double check. Yeah. Make sure my wire goes through. Yes, it does. So that's going to go down to my electronic -y thing. Hmm, that's kind of awkward because it's going to be upside down. I would rather it was all on this side. Oh well. It's more important that it's actually working the way I want it to work. Is that going to be long enough? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, that's that one. And the other one, let's put it back a little bit. Um... I just don't want it getting in the way of my hand. Let's put it there. So that's going to be for my ground wire. And I will be tying a knot in this, but not right now, because I want to get these wires soldered on. <clears throat> okay, so we have decided the red is going to the blue wire. So what I was saying before, I was taught that you inter interweave these wires and then twist them. Now obviously that is not going to prevent you from pulling it apart, but it does give a fairly decent connection. 
and then when you solder it it should be much the same width as the wire let's put that to the test you know what I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on there too good to me. I'm going to use a bit of heat shrink. Uh, I don't need to use all of that. Cut that in half. Slide you down. Now, I was always looking for a, a lighter or something to heat up the heat shrink, but then I saw a guy just using the just use the the solder now. It's pretty hot, you know. Would have been better if I didn't use the dirty bit of the solder now, but hey. And it works just fine. Don't worry, it's not burnt, it's just dirty. Okay, so that's nice. So as I said, that is my power wire. So that's going to the front on the other side of the plastic. Right, yellow one. Same job. Yellow's going to green. Do this with my right hand for some weird reason. Oh, it's much easier with thick wire. And that was something else I was taught when you're soldering wire. You kind of want to heat the wire from the underside so that the solder is running through the wire, not just lying on the top. And again, I will put my heat shrink all the way down. And that helps keep the wire together as well. I can do this without getting it all dirty. Lovely. So, wouldn't need to tie a knot in this one. 
because it's going directly to the mesh but I will be tying it in this one because it's going to go down oh the other side of course because I'm fussy about the way I want to trigger this Okay then, let's get it together. Yep, I'm going to have to cut a little groove in that ridge for the wire to go in. Or I could just drill more holes back here. I'm just giving myself more work if I have to start cutting little grooves. More holes. Don't worry, the second one I make will be nice and perfect. Remember your little button. I'm going to put the screws in not mega tight for now because obviously I'm going to have to slide in the, the strainer. Right, strainer, in you go. We've decided we're operating it that way. Strainer goes in this way. Yep, we can tighten it up there. Obviously something's not lining up in there. Probably because I put this in upside down. Again, I'll get it right in the next one. It's tight enough, so I'm going to solder this onto the mesh. Some people solder it directly onto these bars, but I just feel that that thickness of bar is going to be taking some of the current away. So I'll just kind of wrap it around there and weld it or solder it to that. This time I'm going to tin both the wire and the mesh where it's going to sit. forget that soldering kind of gets hot. <sighs> Looks good. All that's left then. Connect this wire to plug, not a plug, crocodile clip. Doesn't need to be soldered on, but there's no harm in making sure all your connections are nice. Wire through in there. through 
they are. Do a wee wrappy thing. Should have gone the other way. Never too late to fix something. That makes more sense. See if we can get a big blob of soda on there. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to crimp it on first. good to me. I'm going to wait till that cools before I slide this on and then we will be done, apart from the batteries. Do we have a red light? No, don't, don't lick it. So, Theoretically, if I was to touch that against that while pressing that, I would get a spark, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not a fool. But I suppose I better get some glue and some grass and something to sprinkle it on. Oh, exciting. As you may have guessed by now, I've never done this before. But I've watched lots of YouTubes. So I'm going to start with a couple of little spots to make like tufts. And I'll do a couple of squares with different thicknesses of glue, shall we say. Little spots. Small splodge. Big splodge. Give that a bit of a brush. I have no idea how thick the glue should be. I don't know if I'm supposed to water it down. But obviously if the grass immediately lies flat, then no amount of static is going to pull it off the glue. Okay, now, again, I don't even know if you're supposed to wait till it gets tacky, so we'll just try it as is. First thing I need then is my little grounding pin, which I'm just going to put in here. I don't want it too close because I don't want it to spark against my grounding mesh, well, my live mesh, which is why I've used an insulated one of these. So that will go in there. And then we put in some grass. I'm going to be trying the two millimeter spring. Okay, folks. Wish me luck. Oh, I shouldn't have done it over the glue, I've ground it already. Hmm, it's quite clumpy. Okay, here we go. I have no idea what I'm doing. I think I'm wasting quite a lot of static grass. That's definitely what I'm doing because I don't think this is working yet. Let me try some more. It does look a bit clumpy. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna put this back in here. Remove this. Shake this onto something that I can pick it up again, because this stuff's expensive. You don't want to just throw it in. I know you can use like a vacuum cleaner with a stocking over it and stuff, but I don't have a stocking. It's a weekend activity for me. Hold on. So I wasn't convinced that it was really working at all when I took this apart. This wire was no longer attached. Now, did that come apart when I removed the cover or did that come apart and I've just been sprinkling and it's just been natural static that's making the grass even work at all? Let me reassemble this. Obviously, I need to re-solder that. Reassemble. We'll try again. Okay, let's try that again. We're going to go... Splodge dot. Is that a dot or a splodge? We'll do a few. And a big one. And another big one. Now, this time I'm going to start with the four millimeter autumn grass. Put my grounding spike in here. Again, I don't really know if it's supposed to be in the glue, how close it needs to be, or if it just needs to be in the general area. Uh, I guess we'll find out as we go along. Okay. Stick some grass stuff in here. It's very clumpy. I might need to separate this before I start using it because it's a wee bit... Uh, it's more like bushes than grass, to be honest. Anyway. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, I can tell straight away this is working better. Obviously, the closer you get to the the surface, the more static effect you're going to get. And I completely forgot to spread my glue. That was dumb. Oh yeah, that is working so much better. Oh, that big dot, get back in there. Okay, I am going to wait for the glue to dry a bit and then shake all this back into my bag and then let you see how it turned out. Well, that worked way better when it was actually connected to power. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. I will try the 2 mil again later, but it's so much smaller, but those wee tufts are excellent. I like them. They're even better when it's dry and you won't see the white glue. That was successful though, I think. I do need to make a container for the, the top of it though, because I think you really should be doing a up and down motion instead of just a little tap. And just by chance, this jar of purple gravel that I'll probably never use is just the right size to go on there. So I will 
cut a hole around the lid, glue the lid onto that, and then I can screw this on that way and keep my grass in there. Anyway, $8 and it works. Plus $500 worth of tools. Nah, you don't have to go as fancy as I went. I'm sure you can work it out. Anyway, I hope that saved you some money and was mildly entertaining. I've got more tidying up to do, as usual, so I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.